Okay, let me say this about the West Coast. When we're looking at an article like this and we're talking about Vancouver, first of all, we know that money has been coming in from overseas. We've known that. Everybody knows that. If you're from Vancouver, you know that. If you're from another province in Canada and we talk about Vancouver, you know that. We have watched as other countries have literally brought in millions upon millions of dollars across that province. And the people that live there have watched as their home prices have gone up significantly. Now, a lot of that money has been people trying to get it out of their uh, their home countries. Because it's not safe in their country, they would rather bring it in to Canada and trust in it being here with us, being in this land. Because many people love Canada. And quite frankly, the cost is so much cheaper. Now, when you get into the fraud aspect into, into it, you get into so many different applications of how they do this. And when, by inflating the value, everyone starts buying. Well, now you set a new price, then pulling money out of that. All of that money can go wherever they want. They can go into the next spot. They can they can do whatever they want at that point. So we know that there are issues with uh, valuations. But at this point, I would say that that market is fairly stable. Most of it, even though there might be all of that fraud there, it is one of those locations in Canada where people want to live and a lot of people want to to be there. You might not see the long-term appreciation that people are hoping for because the market may have to stabilize. But by and large, it Vancouver is what it is. I mean, for crying out loud, we got U.S. citizens that want to come up and live in places like Vancouver. Look, we've talked about this many times. You can go back and check other spots on other videos that I've put out here. We know that prices in some real estate are going to go up. You're going to have multiple offers and they're going to continue to go up because some homes are desirable. People want to live in those areas. People have the money to be able to buy those homes. They're willing to pay extra for those properties. We know that. Now, what we're talking about here, what this article is trying to address is that we're Everyone was expecting that prices are always going to go up, but maybe not as much as you think they're going to go up. And right now, we're really trying to factor in, the market is trying to factor in lower interest rates. When are they coming? When are they coming? And until that point in time, people are declining to pay as much as they would have. Now, the, the part that I think people need to key in on here if you're listening, is that right now there are there is an opportunity to get some real value because there are people that need to sell properties and they're willing to sell them lower than they would normally. We're still watching in the pre-con market. You know, a lot of people are actually defaulting right now. They're having to give up those properties. They're losing hundreds of thousands of dollars per deal. We are watching that happening right now. There is an opportunity to buy real estate right now before those rates come down and we see the market start to pull back up. All right, guys, go get the receipts. We talked about all of this stuff on previous episodes. What are we, what are we looking at? We know that the prices of real estate are going to are going sideways. They're going down in some cases. That's a that's a known. Now, what happens when interest rates come down? What will be the impact? Now, everyone talks about how the moment it comes down, it's going to rip back up. But in this article, he's talking about affordability. Before, when we had lower interest rates, inflation hadn't kicked in. And so we only had the one area, which was housing prices. Now we've got food has gone up, fuel has gone up, heating has gone up, property taxes have gone up, especially if you're in some of those really affected areas. Sorry about that. But all of the surrounding costs that you and I have has all gone up. 
So it isn't just the inflation from the house prices going up. The affordability question is about someone's entire life. And if people are concerned, even when rates come down, they're going to hold off for a period of time until they see a rebalancing of their books, of your budget, if you have a budget. And and being able to understand what, what's going on there, it always takes a certain amount of time for people to get back into the swing of feeling like they have money again or feeling like they don't have money. That cycle takes time. And so when they do start lowering rates, which we just heard an announcement from the U.S. Federal Reserve that they are unlikely to lower interest rates till at least March. So more than likely here in Canada, we aren't going to be seeing a rate drop until somewhere closer to March time frame at best case scenario. So let that one go. It's probably going to take a little bit before we start seeing the rip of prices going back up again. We need to see some leveling out. And unless, unless, unless people's incomes increase, there is only so far up that it can go. Because at some point, it doesn't matter what interest rates are at, you just can't pay those types of monthly payments. Yeah, if they've got margin, if they've got room to make a profit, then then more people would be selling. You know, the, 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 property, the property was worth a 1.4 million uh, maybe a year or two years ago. Now it's worth 1.2. Well, their mortgage is 1.2. So if they sell it right now, then they've got nothing at the end of that. And so there are many people right now that are trying to figure out how can they hold on to their property, even if they have to rent it out, rent out rooms, do all these kind of things, because the hope is we'll be able to keep our property and when the market comes up, we'll be able to make that money. Now, the only concern about all of that is that the Bank of Canada going into this a year ago, sorry, 2022, they predicted that this whole cycle will probably take a minimum of five to 10 years. So if you're prepared to wait for that, that period of time, then by all means, you'll be in a great situation. Here, here's a little piece. It is common for most people to get five-year fixed mortgages. And interestingly, the banks, lenders all know that most people within three years are going to break those mortgages and refinance them. That is one of the most common things that happens out there. And so people are paying for paying penalties to break their mortgage after three years so why do people always get into five year? Because they always go in with this idea of, oh no, it, it's great. I won't need to borrow any money, but then they start spending like it's going out of style. And three years later, they are refinancing to take out equity from their properties.